Good morning children. Today we are going to read history lesson number 11 the discomfiture of Shasta Khan. Shasta Khan's campaign in spite of repeated efforts in which he left no stone unturned Adil Shah Bijapur could not force Shivaji Raje to surrender. Every Sardar of Bijapur who was sent against Shivaji Raje was defeated. Adil Shah at last gave up the fight, made peace with Shivaji Raje and gave recognition to his independent kingdom. Shivaji Raje thus had peace for some time on his southern border. In the meanwhile, constant Mughal attacks from the north had partially ruined Maharashtra. Shivaji Raje therefore turned his attention northwards and carried out raids in the territory of the Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb. He enraged this enraged Aurangzeb and he sent Shasta Khan, his uncle, to deal with Shivaji Raje and teach him a lesson. Shasta Khan, with a huge army of 75,000 men and hundreds of elephants, camels and pieces of cannon, marched on Pune. On the way, he captured the towns of Shirwar, Shivapur, Saswar and finally laid siege to the fort of Purandar. Nothing could stop his advance, but once the Maratha army surrounded him in a mountain pass. The Maratha troops moved very fast on their swift bheem thadi ponies. They also travelled very light. They could traverse the hills and valleys in the shortest possible time on army rations contain, containing of onions and bajra bread. This type of warfare perfected by Marathas was unknown to Shaiste Khan. Tired of continuous harassment by the Maratha troops, he at last raised the siege of Purandar. Firangoji Narsara Shasta Khan then continued his march on Pune. First, he captured the fort of Tsakal. Firangoji Narsara fought to defend the fort with great bravery and skill against the army of Shasta Khan. For two months, he kept Shasta Khan at bay, but he was helpless against the guns of Shasta Khan. Shasta Khan was much impressed with the way Firangoji defended the fort and offered him service with the Mughal emperor. Firangoji, however, refused his tempting offer. Shasta Khan in Lal Mahal Shasta Khan came to Pune and made Lal Mahal Shivaji Maharaj's residence his headquarters. One year passed, then another year. Shasta Khan would not leave Pune. On the contrary, his troops would raid Shivaji Raja's territory, destroy crops and take away the cattle. In this way, he started devastating the surrounding countryside. A bold plan. At last, Shivaji Raja decided to teach Shasta Khan a lesson. In a way, it was good that Shasta Khan was staying in Lal Mahal. Shivaji Raja knew the place inside out. With all his entrances and exits, its secret passages, doors and windows. Besides, Shivaji Raja's spies were keeping him well informed about the disposition of Khan's troops. Shivaji Raja therefore decided to enter Lal Mahal one night and kill Shaiste Khan. This was indeed a very bold plan. Lal Mahal was so well guarded that even an ant would find it difficult to get through. 75,000 troops were camping outside the palace. No armed Maratha was allowed to enter the town. But Shivaji Raja had made up his mind and there was none who would turn him away from his resolve. Shivaji Raja fixed the day to carry out the plan. One night on night of 5th April 1663, a marriage procession was passing along the streets of Pune. There was music and fireworks accompanied the procession. 
hundreds of people dressed in fine clothes were in the procession. Some were in palanquins, others in menas, while many more were on foot. Shivaji Raja, with his band of trusted followers, joined the procession to give the impression that they were a part of it. After some time, the procession proceeded on its way, but Shivaji Raja and his men moved away quietly in the direction of Lal Mahal. Shasta Khan was fast asleep at this hour. Shasta Khan learns a lesson. Shivaji Raja made a hole in the wall and entered Lal Mahal. He had no trouble in finding his way about because it was after all his own house. The Khan's bodyguards were half asleep. Shivaji's followers tied them up. Shivaji Raja went deeper inside. Suddenly, someone rushed at him with a sword. Shivaji Raja killed him. He thought it was Shasta Khan, but it was his son. There was a commotion. People woke up. Shivaji went straight to the Khan's chambers and took out his sword. Terrified the Khan, started shouting, the devil, the devil, and tried to escape through the window. Shivaji Raja stuck him with the sword, which cut off three fingers of the Khan. The Khan could have lost his life, but he escaped with the loss of three fingers only. The Khan jumped out of the window and made for safety. To deceive the Khan's troops, Shivaji Raja and his men raised the cry, Shivaji has attacked, run, catch him, and started to run themselves. The Khan's troops also started running in all directions. In the confusion that followed, Shivaji Raja and his men made their escape and reached Sihagad. The Khan's troops spent the whole night looking in vain for Shivaji Raja and his troops. This incident took the fight out of Shasta Khan. He was afraid that if he lost only his fingers in the first attack, Shivaji Raja might cut his head off in the second. Aurangzeb was furious when he heard of this episode. Shasta Khan lost the emperor's favor and was transferred to Bengal. This was the first serious blow to the Mughal power. Shivaji Raja had successfully bear the lion in his own den. Gunfire announced the victory and the wave of joy went all over Maharashtra.